Hi, I'm Matthew Bales, and today I'll be presenting on our paper which explores the use of multimodal deep learning to reduce packaging waste at Amazon. Amazon is committed to the Climate Pledge, which pledges that we will reach net zero carbon by 2040, a decade earlier than the goals of the Paris Agreement. Since 2015, Amazon has reduced the weight of its outbound packaging by 36%, eliminating over 1 million tons of packaging material worldwide, or the equivalent of over 2 billion shipping boxes. This reduction is in part due to the use of machine learning to identify the optimal packaging type for each product so that it arrives undamaged while delighting our customers in reducing packaging waste. Here are some examples of outbound package types used by Amazon. From left to right, package types are ranked from most protective to least protective, starting with corrugate boxes, then padded mailers or paperboard envelopes, poly or paper bags, and finally for station-free or ship-and-own container, where no additional Amazon packaging is required. The problem we faced was how to create a scalable mechanism to identify optimal package types across hundreds of millions of products shipped by Amazon. For our purposes, optimal was a balance between packaging waste considerations versus the likelihood that a customer received a damaged item because of less protective or wasteful packaging. For example, fragile products will necessitate more protective packaging, such as a box, while sturdier products could ship in flex flexible package types or even in their own container. An example to contextualize the waste impact of pack type selection, a padded mailer is 75% lighter and occupies 40% less space when shipped compared to a similarly sized box. In this presentation, we highlight insights from using deep learning to identify products that are suited for a given packet type. Our work is novel for two reasons. First, existing packaging literature is limited to either machine learning on smaller data sets, less than 1 million products, or using only texture or tabular information on the products. In contrast, our learnings are based on a larger data set, several million products, and use multimodal information on those products, including product images. Product images of how it is packaged by a vendor are crucial input features overlooked in earlier studies. For example, a machine learning model that solely relies on textual features may predict that an LED light bulb would require box packaging, presuming that it is fragile. However, the product image may actually indicate that the vendor has already packed it safely in a box, therefore making it suitable for shipping without any additional packaging. The second reason is that data sets in the packaging domain have significant class imbalance, and there's little research on evaluating deep learning in the context of both class imbalance and multimodal data. We highlight learnings from using different data level and algorithmic level techniques to handle class imbalance in the packaging domain. We pose optimal package selection as a series of binary classification problems, where the goal is to classify products as either being suitable or unsuitable for each package type. We collect labeled training data through various channels, including manual labeling of products by trained labelers and through direct customer feedback signals. Our model, multimodal deep learning model that learns from both product images as well as textual and tabular descriptions of the products leverages existing deep learning backbones to extract features for each modality. We use a fuse late strategy to combine feature representations near the output layer this technique allows the model to extract high-level features from each modality before deciding how to fuse them. For product images, we pre-process using faster RCNN to crop an image to the product area. Finally, we extract image features with a fine-tuned ResNet 50 architecture that we pre-trained on ImageNet data. Given the diverse nature of the product catalog, the product textual data for example, product names and descriptions, may have out-of-vocabulary words, such as jargon and abbreviations. Therefore, for textual features, we use fast text character-based word embeddings and use a weighted average of those word embeddings to derive product-level textual features. For tabular data, numerical and categorical, we use a one hidden layer multi-layer perceptron to generate vector representations. Finally, we concatenate the topmost vectors from each modality using two dense layers to produce pack type predictions. 
Overall, using multimodal data helped improve model performance in PRAUC on pack type classification by as much as 30% across different pack types compared to the corresponding single modality baselines. We observed that deep learning model performance with multimodal data is most sensitive to how we handle class imbalance compared to any of the other hyperparameters we explored, including alternative deep learning frameworks. We summarize learnings from six different techniques to handle class imbalance. Four are data techniques, two are algorithmic techniques. For data techniques, we modified the training data to reduce class imbalance, and we tested four approaches. In borderline smote oversampling, we duplicated minority samples to achieve class balance using borderline smote. This approach resulted in a PRAUC increase of between 4 and 7% across package types. The biggest, biggest disadvantage is the training took 25 to 35% more time to converge across pack types due to data duplication. In near-miss undersampling, we discarded the majority of samples, therefore throwing out data to achieve class balance using a near-miss algorithm. This approach resulted in either a PRAUC parity or degradation of up to 7% across package types, while simultaneously reducing training time by as much as 40%. In the hybrid of random oversampling and random undersampling approach, we randomly oversample the minority class and randomly undersample the majority class to achieve class balance. This resulted in between 6 and 10% improvement in model performance across package types while increasing model training time by as much as 25%. In two-phase learning with random undersampling, we use the model trained using undersampling as the pre-training phase and further fine-tune the model on original imbalance data in the second phase. The first phase allows the minority group to influence the learning, and in the second phase, the model still gets to see all of the data. This approach resulted in a PRAUC increase by between 18 and 24% across pack types while maintaining parity in training time compared to single modality baselines. In algorithmic techniques, we modified the algorithm's loss function to handle class imbalance, thereby allowing the minor samples to have more influence. We tested two different loss functions, mean squared false error and focal loss, and tested these on the image modality alone. The mean squared false error loss function resulted in improving the model performance by as much as 14%. The focal loss functions uh, have shown promising improvements on the image data sets. The function reduces the importance of easy to classify samples, thereby focusing on hard to classify samples. The focal loss improved the model performance by 5% at best when implemented on the image modality component of our deep model. Overall, two-phase learning with random undersampling was found to be the most effective imbalancing handling strategy on our data set. In summary, our paper adds to sparse literature on how to use machine learning to choose a suitable pack type to ship a given product such that the products arrive undamaged while delighting customers and reducing packaging waste. Our paper also highlights how multiple modalities of product specific data is crucial to assess pack type suitability and how in including those product images, we found that we were able to understand with the combination of textual and tabular data, both what the product is and how it was packaged by the manufacturer. In addition, synthesis studies on deep learning with class imbalance have found that the best technique to handle it, it varies by problem domain. In fact, there exist very few such studies that use data from either real world applications or multimodal data. In that regard, our learnings on imbalance handling techniques contribute both to the packaging domain as well as the broader literature on evaluating deep learning in the context of class imbalance and big data. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to our talk and enjoy the rest of the seminar.